Apple just announced some of the most revolutionary features for Apple Watch and Apple Health at WWDC 2022. In this video, I'm gonna share what they are and how these features can absolutely change our lives. But they don't have enough time to share everything in the keynote. They only share some things in a press release, and I'm gonna summarize all that right here just for you. Watch OS 9, they say that there's new ways to stay connected, stay active, and stay healthy. They've introduced some new cool watch faces, which is interesting, not absolutely life-changing. The biggest thing is the sleep insights. They're taking on Aura, they're taking on the Whoop Strap, they're adding in sleep stages with no extra subscription fee. Right? It, it says Apple Watch users can now detect when they're in REM, core, or deep sleep. So they're adding in these sleep stages that everyone's been talking about. The biggest question is, when do you charge your watch? I charge my watch personally right when I wake up. I put it on the charger and I start to get ready for the day. And then I put my watch on and leave the house. When I come back home, as I'm prepping for bed, I'll put it back on the charger. So my watch will typically range from like 30 to 70% battery throughout the day. And they're saying they've done the largest, most diverse study of any wearable against a PSG, which is the gold standard for sleep stage tracking. That's kind of their subtle way of saying the Apple Watch will have the most accurate sleep stage data, even though that's very, very, very hard to do. I think the Aura Ring is like 50% accurate. I'm very curious to see how these sleep stages are gonna kind of compare to the Aura Ring and the Whoop Strap. If you wanna see that data comparison, let me know in the comments below. But these are exciting times. These companies are competing and they're gonna force each other to become better and better at this. But some of the more interesting features come in the workout app. They started to add heart rate zone. So uh, if you know that heart rate zone two training is really important. Uh, if you're trying to achieve certain kinds of thresholds, they have different zone trainings. They have the actual power that you're using during your workout. So if you want to use that metric to define how hard you're working, and they've added a whole new set of visual features to see your workout data on the Apple Watch. They're adding three new metrics for running and that's stride length, ground contact time, and vertical oscillation. They're using some fancy algorithms to figure that out for you. Then you can use that efficiency metric to optimize your running and make yourself faster. If there's a route that you commonly run, the Apple Watch will know what that route is and you can race against your last time against your previous history. And you can see trends over time on that specific route that you run, whether it's like around your apartment building, around your house. As somebody who absolutely dislikes running, maybe I'll start to run just to kind of test this feature out for you. Then triathletes. If you're a triathlete, that means you swim, you cycle and you bike and you're trying to measure these three workouts, you no longer have to go in the app and actually change the workout. The Apple Watch will auto detect. It'll know and automatically switch. This is your swimming time. Now it's your cycling time. And then boom, it's your running time. And it's gonna create your pace for each of those different sports. One secret they did not mention is swimming. They're actually adding kickboard detection. So if you're using a kickboard while swimming, it'll figure that out and it'll incorporate it. Cause right now it'll do the four strokes and now they'll add in kick and they're adding the swolf score. So that's kind of how efficient you are with your swimming. So they're adding a lot of efficiency metrics for running and swimming. Next is Apple Fitness Plus. They're adding some new metrics in terms of what the instructor's telling you to do. Are you supposed to be going all out right now? Uh, where should your rates per minute be on the bike? Uh, is this a hard intensity or medium intensity? Um, are you running or walking? How, what percentage of that? So they're adding more metrics on the watch and on your iPhone, Apple TV, iPad, whatever Apple unit device you're using for these Apple Plus fitness workouts. And if you have Apple Fitness Plus and you don't have an Apple TV, but you want to play it on an AirPlay device, they're rolling out the ability for you to AirPlay your Apple Fitness Plus to any supported third party that supports AirPlay. First of its kind AFib history. So now they'll be able to track if you have AFib, your trends over time and correlate that to the data of like the day of the week, different intensities and different interactions throughout the day. A new Apple Health feature. You don't need the Apple Watch for this, but medications. You can track your medications just by scanning it with your iPhone, inputting when you need to take that medication or if you just use it kind of occasionally, and then your Apple Watch be able to remind you if you need to take it, and you can also log when you take something occasionally. And then if you are taking multiple medications that might interact with each other, they'll even provide a kind of like critical warning to say, hey, you might have a drug to drug interaction. And, it, and it's not just medication, it's also vitamins and supplements. So if you're trying to live like the liver king and you wanna take their liver supplements, you can go ahead and put that and say, every day at this time, I need to take my liver king supplements to become such a masculine man like him. But this is really interesting because I am really bad at taking my supplements, my vitamins. So I'm gonna to start to use this as well as I have asthma and I don't take my asthma medication very often either. So hopefully this will help. The reminders app, you can actually add and edit key details for your reminders. Cause right now you could just create a reminder, but you couldn't edit these key features. You had to go to your iPhone to do that. I think this is huge, but you can create calendar events on your Apple Watch before. It was really hard to like change these minute details, but now you can create new events on the Apple Watch. But it's these little things that are gonna allow us to use our Apple Watch as our primary device. And some additional secrets that they also mentioned was family setup. As an Apple Watch, when you do the family setup, you don't get all the features on the Apple Watch. 
Uh, so they're adding in HomeKit support so you can actually control the devices in your home. They're adding in a new feature called Quick Actions where you can like double pinch or quick pinch to get answer calls, end calls, start, stop, and resume a workout so you don't have to like go and find the button. They're bringing Apple Watch mirroring so I can mirror my Apple Watch screen onto my iPhone. The keyboard that I use to type on iMessage on the Apple Watch is bringing support to some more languages. We'll have French, German, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, and Spanish. There's a new redesign like most recently used docs on your Apple Watch. They added a new metric for cardio recovery so you can see kind of how quickly your cardiovascular system, your heart can recover from a workout whether it's super strenuous or not. And then new APIs for the Photos app and even just using your Apple Watch directly with the Apple TV. There is one iPhone feature that I think is gonna revolutionize it and that is the focus feature. Right now I use that often to kind of hide certain home screens or notifications. You can have different lock screens, home screens, apps, iMessage filters, Outlook filters, and I think that's gonna be huge. If you can just swipe on your lock screen to change between these focus modes, right, and you wanna filter your iMessages by focus, so now I won't be distracted by that one friend who keeps texting me with the most random things. WWDC, it's gonna revolutionize how we use our Apple Watch and our iPhone. Go watch my video, how I used an Apple Watch instead of my iPhone for 24 hours.